So Radio had always a special place in the home kingdom. It was the first capital established by founder Sukafa in 1253 AD. Always a sacred, deeply revered place. King's coronation, victory marches, and the last rites were held in Soraydil. The spirits of the ancestors resided in these moid arms. These moid arms where the royals were buried in full honors. Through the arched passageway, we have entered a vaulted chamber. Many of the Moidams have multi-story chambers inside. This is Sausali, a small open pavilion at the Moidam peak for worshipping the ancestor. Right now we are in front of Moidam, whose height is uh, relatively higher than uh, the other Moidams in the area. So Moidams are... Uh, so Dam is actually uh, means uh, the deceased, body of the deceased. And so Moidam is a sort of a special place where the deceased is sent into afterlife. So all the things, all the things that uh, the deceased used uh, or was accompanied during his uh, life on earth would also go along with him in the afterlife. So in case of kings and queens, uh, they used to send uh, uh, his servants, his uh, horses, 
sometimes elephants as well to accompany him and give him a wonderful life in the afterlife also. So that was the belief and along with him would accompany the treasures also, very important valuables, essential items also to give him a luxurious good life in the afterlife. Uh, in case of the nobles also, they, they had more dams, but uh, they would be buried only with the essential items, materialistic items of course. Only in cases of the very high royals uh, would uh, be accompanied with live uh, beings. So we make our way back from uh, this particular modam, quite big, if you see, in comparison to the other modams. Many of the practices and rituals later on underwent reforms and vast changes during the long period of their reign. The practice of sending live beings with kings and queens was also later abolished. Uh, right in front of me on the right side you can see uh, a water body. And this water body was the place where the body of the deceased before being uh, duly laid into the moidams would be washed. So moidams were not always ready. So, whenever an Ahum royal died, the Moidams were not always ready it, it, because it, uh, precise calculations had to be done, the size of the Moidam, what would be, what things would be accompanying him and depending on the prestige, depending on the success, depending on the grandeur of achievements of that particular deceased, calculations had to be done. So there would be a period of around 11 to maybe 40 days in which the entire thing would be ready. The entire modam would be ready for the royal to be laid into the afterlife. Now once the modam was ready, the body would be brought into this, near this water body. Now, Ahoms, you are keeping the body for 11 to around 43 days. How do you keep it? How do you prevent putrefaction or decomposition? So they used to keep it in a special chemical solution of which the major ingredient was honey bees, honey. So once the Maidam was ready, they will bring this to this place, they will wash it. And imagine for a moment this entire place all the rituals when the body would be brought when the king when the when the king the queen the royals would be brought over here they would be washed it would be surrounded by the royal family members and also the priestly class then slowly only only a few close members would be allowed to carry the body of the deceased into his or her respective Maidam. From there, they will carry it to the various modern designated Maidams. You can just have a look over the water body also. So for a few moments, let's relieve. What would have been the atmosphere all around? It will be a moment of poignancy, a sadness that the king, that the queen, or the Rajmata, or the prince, or the princess 
has left the life on this earth, there will be a moment of sadness. At the same time, there might be a sort of happiness also, because they are going to a life beyond this life. And so from here, after washing the body with these thoughts, the body would be taken by the selected few members. It would be followed by the other members of the family and also the priestly class would be conducting these rituals. From here, they would slowly take the steps and proceed towards the designated Moedam. Making our way to the crypt, to the massive underground walls, which is double storied, with two to three vaulted chambers on each floor. The topmost chamber was for laying the departed king's body. Inside, an ornamented wooden box called the Rungdan. The royal bed of the departed king was ornamented with gold foil and diamond stones. The other necessities like pillows embroidered with golden thread, the Hingdan, the sword which was gazed with diamond stones in the handle and horai of silver, etc. The elephants, the horses, caretakers and servants were assigned different chambers. The walls have a domical superstructure and covered by heap of earthen mound and thus the moedam appears as a hemispherical mound. The main entrance to the Moedam's underground crypt is in the west direction. An octagonal boundary wall encloses the Moedam at all sides of the base. This octagonal wall is about 2 to 3 feet wide and 4.5 feet high.
Moidams are widely dispersed across Dibrugar, Churhar, and Hibohagar. However, the highest concentration is in Soraidil. Out of more than the 150 Moidams in Soraidil, 30 of these Moidams is under the conservation by Archaeological Survey of India, ASI. Some of these bigger Moidams in Soraidil is associated with the Ahom King, Godadar Hingha, and his son and successor, Rudra Hingha. Over a long period of time, treasure hunters, robbers, have excavated these Moidams in search of loot and plunder. An interesting trivia takes us to the year 1662 AD when Mir Zumla, the Nawab of Bengal, had briefly occupied the capital Gorgao. Somehow he came to know about the riches in the Moidams of Soraidio. He sent a convoy of elephants and had many of these Moidams looted. 160 odd years later, in 1826 AD, when the control fell into the hands of the British, many of these modams were subsequently excavated. The British also promoted the cultivation of tea, which led to the destruction of many of these modams by tea garden estates and also various private individuals when encroached on these lands. In the past few centuries, these Moidams have suffered neglect and apathy. As on the eighth, the Moidams that we see in front of ourselves are the few that is under ASI conservation. These are legacies from the past, witness to an eventful era of 600 years of a kingdom, having been a symbolic center and a sacred place that has inspired and given hope in dire times to many a kings, queens, prince and princesses. In many texts, it was opined that Soraidu was envisioned to be a series of hillocks that will appear as the dazzling mountains in the sky. In the last decade, many historians, local groups and governmental authorities have put diligent efforts to put Soraidu in the UNESCO World Heritage Map. Let's hope Soraidio earns its rightful place in the annals of history.